So finally, the JCC, Judicial um, Conduct Committee, had now issued a statement uh, finding the Chief Justice Mokweng, Mokweng uh, guilty of misconduct and um, they will also return him uh, an apology, a scripted apology that he has just to go out there and read it. <laughs> and this hilarious situation reminds me of a movie, uh, I think it was Braveheart, where Longshanks, the king of England, just wanted him to just kneel down, you know, kiss the king's ring, apologize and ask for mercy that so that he would have a quick killing and uh, he just end up screaming freedom you know, so this situation is hilarious in that manner because i've just seen that Mukweng Mukweng also had said that if 50 million people uh protest uh, to him each and every single day for the next 10 years he would not uh, apologize and if he perishes he perishes so he says and um so i eventually had to go and listen to that webinar which um chief justice Mukwe Mukweng did with the jerusalem post they also have uh, the chief rabbi uh, of south africa uh, mr goldstein goldstein um where he was having this webinar <clears throat> and um, I watched the whole thing about one hour 30 minutes you can go to Jerusalem in fact you can go to your favorite search engine internet search engine type Jerusalem post uh, you'll find the webinar and uh, just uh, listen to it yourself it's quite interesting on a whole lot of things that he had said basically and um, I think basically that webinar, the topics ranges from the news editor of uh, Jerusalem Post uh, asking the Chief Justice uh, about his views on um, South Africa's stance um, against Israel. As you know that um, the ANC government obviously right now, it supports... Um, the Palestinian cause in Jerusalem and um, this also uh, need together with the JCC the Judicial uh, Conduct Committee which state that uh, they were not happy with Mohamed Mohamed's statement um, regarding the ANC policies with um, Jeru um, Israel um, because they're still going to debate this issue of sanctions in the, um, the United Nations and when you when you listen to what he said basically um, he's he quoted a couple of scriptures with regard to um, Israel where essentially there's a scripture that state that um, as a Christian, you have to uh, pray for Israel, love Israel, and as a result, when you pray and love the country of Israel, things will go well in your own country. I forgot the other scripture that he, he had quoted. And obviously, this stems from his uh, personal view as a, as a Christian. And he also said, you know what? When it comes to the policies of uh, the ANC government against Israel, he thinks that um, holistically that wasn't a, a good move because if you look at Nelson Mandela, when he came out of jail, he, he preached peace and um, he said that we have similar parallels with the situation in um, Israel and um, Palestine um, with our... Um, former past with the apartheid government and the ANC and all other um, armed struggle um, organization in the Republic having to fight, having to be on the verge of um, civil war to 
coming with the uh, Codesa negotiations before the elections to the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So it was f things that he had quoted, which said, listen, I think this is a golden opportunity that as South Africa, essentially we could take a lead and show the whole world how it's done, um, getting uh, uh, Israel and um, Palestine together and um, come with our own experiences of how we went through things in the past to make those uh, nations to coexist together. But um, before you know it, um, this is where we are now. And I'm beginning to see that it's somehow somewhat kind of difficult for, for um, essentially there's lack or no freedom of uh, religion at all. Because if you see all these cases where Christians are to maybe conduct uh, their certain services or your Christian um, business and so forth, it's difficult for them to say, hey, we are a Christian establishment and therefore we don't want our rights to be infringed by certain quarters or certain lobby groups that has their own other different rights to to us and um uh, nine out of ten the christian values or ethos loses in in court and um, so it also then happened to um Wem Wang. so it's going to be interesting to see if he's going to apologize as he had already said that uh if 50 million people are going to protest against him for the next 10 years, he will not uh, uh, apologize if he perishes. Uh, he perishes. And in that very same webinar, actually, when they asked him, uh, that uh, Jerusalem Post News editor asked him about um, forgiveness and so forth, and he actually uh, said that he loves uh, uh, the Palestinian people and he also loves the Jerusalem uh, people. And um, so, yeah, it's all about context when one uh, views these things. And um, so we'll just see how these things are are going to, to unfold. And it's quite interesting that uh, Judge Trope in the Western province there, I think it's been two years that they've been trying to get to... Uh, the hearings um, of what he was being accused of. And when it comes to Mokwe Mokwe, you can see that justice is a little bit <laughs> swifter. But also one thing that we have to notice is that um, the gentleman spoke a lot when it comes to what the Minister of Basic Education called Kodif, Kodif 19. <laughs> you know, even in that webinar, he had given an example about fear, he lamented the media's um, inkling of always being negative. He said when uh, COVID-19 came through in the media, it was just fear, 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 fear. Uh, they were already like prophesizing as to how many people are going to die. And you can look at that example where they've said that they've, they've are going to dig about a million grave uh, holes uh, around Pretoria and they, the government quickly apologized and um, recently also he spoke about uh, the vaccines and the people's rights to be able to if they want to opt out they should opt out if they want to question they should question that and he was lambasted and criticized heavily that the minister of um, health Zuelim Kize had to also to have a bit of a rebuttal saying that, hey, you know, never mind what uh, the Chief Justice had said, we are going to have preachers who are also going to be taking these uh, vaccines and uh, leaders of churches and everything. Uh, no. And uh, they, they eventually spun the whole issue that would make our Chief Justice uh, to look like a cook or a crazy person who said that... Um, the vaccine, it's from uh, the devil and so forth. And, you know, painted it as if this is a huge conspiracy theory, like the man had lost his mind. 
you know, it sort of remind me of that gentleman who went to JJ Tabani show, uh, who came in and spoke about the rogue uh, units in SARS and an article came out that also painted him to be a crazy, crazy peasant. And um, to knit this uh, together, when uh, Moren Moren was giving a speech some other time, he also gave an example about how the media could uh, paint the bad pictures about uh, about an individual to look crazy at the end of the day to everyone. And uh, when th those people tend to open their mouth, they start to make sense. And even if it's something that you could disagree about, it will be something that would be sound and the person would not be painted as crazy as they would uh, uh, seem to be. So anyways, that's my take. Uh, my name is um, Mamuji and thanks for watching the Mamuji show. I'm out.